Was it? Hi, Baldy. Okay. okay, this is Second Valley Regional Vocational Technical School District School Committee meeting, December 14, 2021. Uh, in attendance is the superintendent, uh, secretary, Kristen, and Christine Kim, Ron Fusco, Karen Gillis, yeah. Cheryl Bartoloni, Charles Fiore, Brian O'Donnell, Nancy O'Gates, Kent Moffat, Bob Peterson. I get everybody. <laughs> Myself, Patricia Muse, and Taylor, our student representative. All right. Uh, we'll do the Melanie. Oh, Melanie. Don't worry. See, I didn't look up. I got my list. <laughs> and Melanie had been our business manager. Okay. Rise for the pledge of allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Taylor, you are up. So, to start, we have a newspaper club. It's called The Rampage. Mm -hmm. And they so urge you to check the issue out to learn more about what's been happening around Shawshank this fall from the perspective of our students. And it is available on our website. Next, we have the Class of 2024 fundraiser at Liberty Bell in Gilberta. Wednesday, December 15th, a uh, dine out night to support the Class of 2024. Um, it is 10 percent of the proceeds during that time will go to shaw sheen's class of 2024. we're more than halfway through quarters uh quarter two so we're kind of reaching the midterm before the holidays come around skills usa leadership team has wrapped up their yearly toys for tops fundraiser they collected 190 toys and would like to thank you all for your help in bringing a smile to the children of our community that needed it. Yeah. And winter sports are officially underway. So boys basketball <clears throat> coached by Joe Gore is currently 1-0 after defeating Whittier last Friday. And they're playing as we speak at Chelmsford High School. Cheerleading is coached by Sam Cassiola. Winter tryouts are complete. Their first bat home basketball game is Friday night at 7 o'clock, and competitions will begin in February. Boys hockey is coached by Chuck Baker, and they open the season on Thursday versus Methuen High School at the Hallenberg at 710. Girls basketball is coached by Kate Marshall and Sam St. George, and they're currently also 1-0 after defeating Whittier last Friday. Girls hockey coached by new coach Kate O'Shea, is currently 0-2 and, and face Peabody on Saturday at 11 a.m. Swim team coached by Rick Menard opens the season on Wednesday versus Greater Lawrence at 4.30. And wrestling coached by Doug Pratt. Um, we finished fourth at the Salem tournament this past weekend. Sid Tilsley took first place. The team faces Essex, Essex Masco Co-op tomorrow at 6 p.m. At, uh, at Masco. And they published a great article in Sunday's Boston Globe on the wrestling program and new head coach, Doug Pratt. And it's also available on our website. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. Are you wrestling with the next week? Um, I'm not sure. I hope you do, and I hope you have fun when you do. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the approval of bills and payrolls going around. We also have a bill from Nuttall and McAvoy mm -hmm. um, in for December, uh, for November, the amount of $172. I just emailed everybody earlier this week. I, I just have a question. When did that come in that the other two bills aren't paid yet? Yeah, the other, it's just a it's a matter of warrants from okay. the last meeting getting the warrants then and getting the checks out the door and the bill came in last okay. one, the other day whatever day I sent it to. All right. So we always blame 
she took the the treasure in the town. We never take the blame for the bill not being yeah. <laughs> 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 Should we get out of here? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, approval of minutes of November. Oh, we, oh, we didn't get a motion yet. Make a motion to uh, second. What's your motion? <laughs> to pay the bills as described. <laughs> you want the second, Bob? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. And I think um, Brian, did you have a question on those bills? Something about I think um, you already asked you already the question, those? which was had to do with why did we see oh, okay. the prior amount? So the only amount that we're approving this time is the hundred seventy-two. Right. Okay. Approval of minutes of November twenty-third. I'll make a motion. We approve the minutes of the meeting of November twenty-third, two thousand twenty-one. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No, same minutes. Yes. Okay. One abstention. All right, one abstention. Correspondence, well, we've already done. We don't have any other correspondence, mm. huh? Nothing. Nothing. That's actually kind of a good thing. <laughs> you know. <laughs> we've been getting some really good publicity in the paper, though, which is really uh, nice. Yes. And I'm yeah, glad to see that you guys share it with us. Yes, we have. All right, no public here. Uh, superintendent, you're already up. Oh, wow, I'll try to keep moving here. Um, I can't handle the pressure. Let's see if I get this thing. Um, so, um, I wanted to just go through a few statistics with you, if I can. Um, So just a brief update, um, as expected, um, our COVID cases um, have um, uh, sharply increased um, since uh, the Thanksgiving, since our return from Thanksgiving. Um, these, are, um, these are Thursday through Wednesday reports. So the last report was um, a week ago, uh, a week ago, Tomorrow night, so on 12-8, uh, we had 27 cases in the course of that one week, um, which is almost double our previous high. Uh, we actually had 12 cases in one day. Um, uh, we are seeing um, anywhere between 80 and 100 students each morning in our test and stay program, which is having an incredible, um, is, is having an incredible um, impact on our resources um, because we have to have um, administrators down there to do student management and to move kids and to keep them separated and to supervise. Um, it is, it is um, spilling into first period, well into first period with some students uh, missing um, um, at least at least half of their first period because they have to get tested and they have to wait 15 minutes for the results. Um, we are actually, um, we, um, the, all of the test and state um, resources are being provided by a company called CIC, which is a subcontractor to the Department of Education at no cost to us through their, um, through their uh, federal uh, COVID grants. Um, we've actually, tomorrow, we're going to move them back to start at 6.45 a.m. so we can try to get uh, some students through before uh, first period. Uh, but we are right in the middle of what we expected to be a very, very difficult month. Um, I just looked at the, uh, the spreadsheet, that, the shared spreadsheet that um, I have access to, and thus far, with one more day to, work, to go, which is tomorrow, um, we've had between last Thursday morning, which is December 9th, and today, we've had 16 cases. Um, so I'm hoping we won't beat our old record and we'll start to see a small decline. Um, we have been told to expect another sharp increase after um, the um, December holidays. So. Um, I can just ask people to please um, 
consider uh, maintaining as much social distance as you can during the uh, holiday season. Uh, I have encouraged parents in the past to please consider um, uh, limiting their students' um, social uh, gathering of social events, um, student on student um, social events. Um, those are um, those are uh, likely to have a high level of transmission. Um, we um, still do have a mask mandate. Um, that is um, on until at least January 15th. If you saw in, in the news today, there is a um, considerable amount of pressure um, being put on the governor to institute a statewide mask mandate, which he has resisted and continues to resist. Um, I wouldn't... Um, um, if I were a betting man, I would say that the January 15th date of mask mandates in schools would probably be extended um, beyond January 15th. Um, but um, <laughs> as of now, it's at least through January 15th. Our vaccination rates have basically remained unchanged. They're ticked up half a point maybe um, across in the past month um, with 75.3% of uh, the 16 to 19 year olds in our five communities are vaccinated and 60.9% of our um, 12 to 15 year olds are vaccinated. Full, this is fully vaccinated, uh, which is either two Moderna, two Pfizer or one Johnson and Johnson. It does not include, um, it does not include uh, booster. booster. Um, the definition of fully vaccinated, according to the DPH, uh, is, does not include the booster. Okay, um, do you track the in-school transmission of COVID? We um, we identify cases that we think are probable in-school transmission, but there's no way with 100% certainty that we can we can identify it we i think uh well we have um identified a high higher number of in-school transmissions um this year than we had last year um i think that it's probably safe to say we estimated at least 10 percent of our cases are from in-school transmissions um, last night, that's not a good statistic because last year we didn't have we had one case of school transmission. Last year, we had social distancing at lunch. Um, we do not have social oh, distancing at lunch now because we're full. Uh, and um, and, more social uh, we and, and we only have half the students. And we only have half the students. Um, so um, we, uh, we have seen, um, we have seen <laughs> some Suspect we have some suspected cases of in school transmission. Um, we didn't, um, we consulted with the Bill the Board of Health. It, it, it's not considered a cluster, but uh, there was uh, one of our shops did have a high number of concurrent uh, cases um, that, um, that we suspect may have been in school transmissions again. A lot of these students socialize in, in school, out of school, but um, it's, um, it's uh, I, I think it is higher this year than it is last year. Um, and then in terms of recruitment, um, these are our current numbers. Um, 3%, we're up to 3%, um, 12 students in uh, Bedford. Uh, have applied, uh, 32 in Burlington. Um, our Tewksbury number is um, starting to go up uh, finally um, as a uh, percent of the total. We have 352 eligible uh, applications with the seven out of district. Um, we are, as I told you, um, have been telling you at each meeting, um, I've set our freshman class size of 340. Uh, for next year's class. So we are already um, uh, 19 Ooh. over um, and we have 
two and a half months, no, one at February 1st, so one and a half months, six weeks of applications um, <clears throat> to go. Uh, we are um, currently um, conducting interviews. Um, uh, Ms. Lesko is heading that up. Um, Ms. Camarada are, uh, has also been uh, lending a hand in doing interviews. She was trained by uh, Ms. Lesko to do the um, um, to do the uh, interviews and also um, sat in with her on a number of them so that they could have some um, so they would use the same scoring criteria and agree on what a four is and this answer and the two is and that answer. Only so the be, two of them are doing at interviews. At this point in time, that's it. Um, <laughs> they've been spreading it out. A lot of students have been choosing to come here um, for their um, for their interviews. Um, so. Um, uh, that is uh, that's a sign of um, interest. Of interest, um, we also are uh, seeing a lot of interest in our seventh grade project explore programs, um, and um, so which seems to indicate that uh, we continue to have a lot of interest among uh, not just this current eighth grade, but among. All, the interest is healthy in all five communities and uh, in um, not just in eighth grade. So um, I think we're in a good spot in terms of recruitment for the fall. Um, I expect that we'll have a full class. Um, the, as a result, because we'll be graduating about 200, or almost 300 kids and bringing in 340, our class, the school itself is going to grow. Um, because we, um, this senior class is actually smaller, is the smallest class we have. So, how many members of the sophomore class? 360. We, our junior and senior classes are 360. Um, so, that's why I brought this one down. We're, the goal is to be 350 per class, but because last year's seniors and this year's seniors <clears> were <throat> smaller, we accept 360. Um, this for those last two years. Okay. And well, I, I just want to mention Cheryl Quadaloni wrote a letter to the chair of the Pittsbury School Committee regarding how they were the only school that did not really allow us to do our program oh, in good. front of their students and would be discuss it with her or us about having the program done. And unfortunately, he was away, right? And he got the letter. Right. So he said he would get back to you so this would, week. Should be this week. And I just yeah. asked if we could, you know, arrange, you know, a, an um, assembly before January seventh. Um, you know, to give some students that are, you know, not sure um, if they want to apply at least, you know, almost a month to apply. Um, so yeah. So we'll see how that goes. And I also ran into Bridget Garabini and at. Um, at a, a basketball game and she said you know, we're you know they're open to talking about it and uh, hopefully we'll we'll get an assembly that would be wonderful thank you thank you thank you for doing that that was great, great cheryl that concludes my report i have a question um, um, yes. just a minor point in the early morning testing does it have to be a nurse to do the testing can a teacher Help. You have to be trained by the nurse. To but do they it. can be somebody trained. They don't have to be yes. medical people doing it. Well, if we're having CIC is doing it. Oh, okay. So they're doing all of that. Okay. Our administrators are down there just to do student management because right. you've got them. They they're not able to move kids in and out. They're just swabbing and putting them in the test tube and and managing the the data. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Part of the solution. Right. Thank you. Subcommittee reports. Oh, policy. policy. I think you're up. Policy <laughs> met tonight again, uh, only this time with the uh, lovely new manuals that everybody has. Exhibit A. Taryn will exhibit it. Lovely little folder. Small little thing. Yeah, little thing. <laughs> and uh, after mm -hmm. some discussion, we decided to meet on January 11th uh, from 6 to 8 to start the first two 
hearts and see how it goes. We're all going to do all of it so that we can reach some consensus, hopefully. We'll okay. see how the first meeting goes. I think it's going to be indicative of the future. All righty. Okay. And Bob, could you just give us a quick update? On this? I can't. Thank you. And the the advertisements are out. Uh, we do have a few applications in. Uh, applications are due in by January 7th, 2022. Uh, the subcommittee will, be, will review the applications between January 7th and January 14th. Uh, the subcommittee will meet on the 18th uh, to discuss potential candidates and determine those to be interviewed. Uh, there's a second meeting set for January 20th, if necessary, uh, to discuss potential uh, candidates. Our next regular meeting will be on the 25th. And preliminary interviews will be conducted by the subcommittee January 31st, February 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And we need to determine a date. Um, Probably at the January meeting, where finalists will be interviewed by the entire committee. Mm -hmm. So we'll can we'll, we'll You don't mean the January meeting? You meant the February meeting. We should probably set a date oh, at, set the a date? Okay, at the January meeting in February to okay. conduct interviews. All right. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. So we will conclude the inter preliminary interview process by Thursday, February, uh, February 3rd. Are you going to include site visits as part of the? <clears throat> I would say yes. I think that's probably something that we would decide, you decide that as we interview. Okay. If you need additional help with site visits, please don't hesitate to reach out. Don't know how you plan I think that. when we get to the site visit portion of the process, everybody, 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 wants yeah, everybody, everybody wants to go. At that point, yeah. yeah. That's a list. Yeah. That's a list. I believe I saw that there were two other vocational schools uh, search proceed, proceedings really? going on in Massachusetts right now, and uh, it, it seems like they it kind of works out well in terms of they're staggered. Right. I think. Um, Montecito Tech is at the bleed of the pack, and then Minutemen mm -hmm. had their, I think, due date early November. So it, everything went within a relatively short range, but there might, there will obviously will be some overlapping candidates and mm -hmm. people who will emerge and things will come up in those proceedings, which might be of some benefit to us as the likely right. third player mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, old business. Do we have any old business? Anybody have old business? Okay. New business. The proposed substitute teacher pay increase. At the request of uh, Mr. Peterson, uh, Melanie put together for the committee uh, a comparison of the substitute um, teacher and nurse pay scale um, of our five member communities, Greater Lowell and ours at the bottom for your information. Um, and, uh, I'm actually surprised. Is that really Tuxbury right now? Because they used to be the lowest <clears throat> in the Merrimack Valley. That's the information we got. I can let you know who this okay. goes to. But... All right. Thank you. Are we able to fill <clears throat> fill vacant substitutes, vacancies with substitutes? Uh, we, along with all five of these communities and pretty much every community in Massachusetts, are suffering from a substitute shortage. Um, and, um, so we are we are struggling, but um, as is everyone. We made a change a month or two ago. Could you remind me what that change was? The uh, the one change we did make was it was our practice in the past to once you uh, once a day to day day to day sub uh, has worked 
for 90 or more days, they, or excuse me, 60 or more days, they get paid $125 a day. Um, they, um, and then the next year, under our former practice, they would return to the start $85 a day. We, um, at my request, that, that practice was eliminated for anyone who had uh, substituted for us more than 60 days <coughs> the prior year would automatically start at the at the um, new rate, and that was retroactive to this year, and it impacted three people to try to promote some longevity and um, to reward uh, mm -hmm. some people who do well, our regular substitutes for us. Um, yes, I'm sorry, sir. Um, have you guys ever given any thought to, you know, um, hiring maybe, you know, two or three full-time substitutes on salary with benefits and have them almost, you know, as part of the staff and they come in, you know, who's out today? Okay, I'm going to work. And, you know, someone's had a maternity leave, but they're a full-time employee, you know, uh, to get all of the benefits that a you know, full-time teacher would have as an incentive to, to come to Shoshin. Like a float? Like a float, an employee with a, a floating team. A lot, a lot of districts used to have permanent subs. Um, you end up, what, what you end up doing is you end up hiring them hiring for, as a teacher, as a teacher <laughs> and then backfilling traditionally, because it, which is great. There, it's a great source for getting somebody and giving getting a chance to kick the tires. Um, that we don't have one of those in the budget currently, right? Um, no, we used, we used to, to years ago. Um, we had an individual that was here. It wasn't a certified teacher, though. She was um, just a long-term sub. Mm -hmm. You remember Leslie Marsh was Marsh. here mm -hmm. for a long time. I don't know why we stopped. When I think she Maroney left, was the been, last one. Huh? Maroney was the last one, and then he got hired permanently. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, how many substitutes, was, per, if you don't mind, how many substitutes per day do we have? I, I actually no. don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm not involved in the substitution side of it at all. Mm. Other than going through payroll, but I don't, I'm not involved. In the Who hires the substitutes? The, well, the substitutes? Who, who does the coverage? For the substitutes? coverage is done out of the high school office. They, uh, they, they call the subs and assign them. So you have a list of subs. And they, it's a, I would say, I know, I know how it's my, done at other schools. Probably a half a dozen a day. Mm. We actually, knock on wood, have had, we, we have very good staff attendance here. Very good staff attendance. In fact, I've actually had to ask people if they have the SNP this year, if you have the sniffles or aren't feeling well, please stay home, which was, I couldn't believe I was actually writing that memo, but yeah, we saw it. Um, it was. <laughs> um, it was necessary to try to keep people safe. Is a long-term sub something that the budget subcommittee could discuss and consider? I'm, I'm not on the budget subcommittee, but maybe because yeah. it may turn out that feasibly it doesn't make sense. But if it's been a long time since we've had it, maybe it's worth considering. Sure. Well, we could add that to the to the list of if there are any other new positions. That are under consideration. Mm -hmm. We're meeting next this week, right? Yeah, to Thursday talk about your position, so we'll talk about that as well. Thank you. But isn't this because of the COVID that we have that need, or is it a, has it been an ongoing? No, this is an ongoing. I've been COVID? dealing with lack of substitutes mm -hmm. for years. It has um, been exacerbated. It was, I don't think it was huge here because we did, did have a great um, attendance. attendance right. Yeah, teachers really weren't out that often. You know, but. But yeah. you don't Out think school. COVID exacerbated it? Well, well what COVID, yeah, COVID really hasn't exacerbated it. Yeah. What what tends to exacerbate it is medical leaves that you end up taking your day-to-day -day subs and moving them into a semi-permanent or a mm -hmm. moderate term. Um, so if you uh, But that's so, not COVID related. That that's not COVID related. That's either those are mostly medical issues. Mm -hmm. And we had you know, two, three, four of those. You get those every year, um, whether they be maternity or other medical issues. Right. 
just on two things. So one sort of long term, and it goes to I think the issue about permanent subs for another day. Uh, maybe whether or not the hiring of subs is helping or not helping other human resources goals for the for the school district. Uh, I mean, some schools I think have done interesting things in terms of subs become part of the way they they diversify based on gender. Uh, locational skills, whatever, get get new people in through the sub, subbing programs and then they have an opportunity and, and maybe someday we should be looking at, at that long term, whether or not our sub our current sub program is, is helping with that or not helping as opposed to just getting us through day to day. So I, that's one thing. The other thing is when Bob first raised this question, um, I think he was sort of raising an important sort of gen, um, pay equity kind of issue about what do, what do these numbers mean? And so when we talk about a day, what is our, are we talking about a six hour day customarily? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. That's normal seven to two, seven thirty right. to two. And, and again, I'm sort of following up on some points Bob initiated. So we're in a Commonwealth that as of January 1st goes to a $14.25 dollar an hour minimum wage with a $15 minimum wage to go into effect a year hence. So, I mean, that kind of puts us, puts this in perspective in terms of what these numbers represent, which is a little over minimum wage, but that's about where we're at. And I think that explains some why all the school districts are having problems because the pay scales and what's happening, and you know, somebody, I mean, I spent a lot of my time dealing with wage and hour issues. The, the pay scales are just changing so quickly. Yeah. And some businesses can keep up and some can't. So we're talking, and I, I mean, I saw another school district that's advertising like $133 a day just to try to stimulate interest. So I think this is a, a good step, but I think that's, we, we have to put it in, in that context is, 14.25 an hour times six, <laughs> do the math on that, right. compare it to this and what we, who we expect to do this and who we want to do this. I think, I think we, I think it's important um, to, to do that not only for substitutes, but to do that for other positions that <laughs> are, um, you know, that are, to have a tendency to be towards the lower end of the pay scale. Uh, paraprofessionals is an area where you're going to get a lot. We're going to get a lot of pressure around hourly rates. Um, cafeteria workers is another place um, where you're going to get um, a lot of pressure around hourly rates. The difference between those two and uh, uh, substitute is that those at least have benefit packages to go with it. Substitute teachers don't have benefit packages at all. So. Um, um, per se, you know, they don't have access to our health insurance or, or pensions or anything like that. So, um, but there's a lot of pressure on all of those, you know, we're going to be seeing a lot of pressure on bus contracts as school bus drivers, you know, so some of these lower paid jobs um, are going to, you know, districts are going to be, um, you know, are going to be a lot of districts are going to be struggling. I mean, we don't have as many paraprofessionals as most K to 12 districts because more paraprofessionals have a tendency to work more in elementary schools than they do in mm -hmm. secondary schools. But you know, we've got what 15 or 18. 18. Yeah, yes, what are the qualifications that we require for sex? Other than one, do they have to be? <laughs> they have to have degrees. I was going to say, have to have 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 you get you typically get either yeah. kids in college, you get retirees, yeah. you get so they do um, have some teaching background and hopefully you do hopefully great. the retirees. Yeah. Well, they could be teacher retirees or retiree retirees. Um, they could um, 
one of our coaches who's a retiree is a substitute here. Well, actually, he's now a professional, but um, oh, you're they, saying our retirees, yeah, our, our teacher retirees yeah. sometimes okay. come back. Um, that would because be they ideal. Don't need benefits. Yeah. Well, that's that's um, you have a special pay rate for them, which mm -hmm. is is very um, uh, thoughtful of the committee. And uh, I think it was probably Superintendent Lyons who did that years ago. And, that was a very smart move That's to encourage those folks to yeah. stay. Um, and uh, you know, sometimes they'll work a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday because they want they the long, long weekend, weekend <laughs> but they also want to stay connected to the kids. So, do we not currently pay eighty-five dollars a day? Yes, sir. Up to uh, ten days. Right? Up to ten days. Is that what jobs? So we can bring that up. Right? I mean. We had spoken about increasing we that at the last meeting, right. correct? That's right. That's, that's we want to see if we can in the, the budget the increase it. We do have something to say to you, Brian. Um, the minimum wage is stating usually municipalities, I believe, are exempt. Yes. Yes. Oh. They're, oh, no, I'm not saying they're necessarily governed by right. it, but that's what that's right. where so they're still the market. And it's also, yes, I understand that. that, that it, it, it makes it even worse. Well, well it does. Yeah. It's interesting because when they moved it up the last time, like I, AIDS and Kickstarter were getting paid right. like a dollar less, and we did not bump them up. Yeah, no, it's a, that's a real issue with that dichotomy mm -hmm. between the public sector, private sector, right. and that area. And um, it's also one of those areas going to something we were talking about in the policy, but where you know a public entity can say we, we want to do better than what we have to do. Right. In this case, we probably have to do better Which, because yeah. I would agree. I think we have to do better. Do we know um, what we utilize the most? Are we utilizing our subs on the 60-day plus? Or are we? Utilizing them at most on the 30 day or the day to day. Well, as I understand this, Melody, right, they start for the first 10 days they work for us, they get $85 a day. Then when they get their 11th assignment, they work for us the 11th day, that 11th day they're paid $100. So their day to day subs, after they've worked 10 days, they've bumped up from $85 a day to $100 a day. Then they say, then when they work there, if they take work for us for a 31st day, on that 31st day, they get $125 for that day. During the school year. During each school year. So they're incentivized to keep. To stay. Coming back. Do most, <laughs> do most need, sub needs, is it more um, teacher Joe is out for a day, or is it more, you know, that teacher Joe has. Uh, broken their leg and is out for two weeks. Like, is it a lot of one day? You may not know because I don't yeah. think either of you run the sub, but it's, it's mostly one days and anything that we have, like a, 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 a no extended leave, like maternity leave. Yeah, typically that's when we would try to hire a licensed teacher and we would negotiate a contract that. with the superintendent's office yeah, to do a little bit that. more because right. now they're going to be required to do more than right. just yes. commit for the day. Now they're going to have lessons. Plans and sure. really parents do uh, grading and things like that. They're, that that's a different job. A day to day, when you're working for somebody for two, three, four, eight weeks, yeah. you're doing lesson planning, you have to talk to parents, you have to grade papers, you know, mm -hmm. like that's that's a different pay scale. Yeah, I think, okay. I, I think historically, like the day to day stuff was, wasn't someone who really wanted it extended. You know, it was, you know, because I did it when I had little kids, you know, so you like to do a couple of days a week. You you didn't really want to go in for a, a, a full-time job. You know, you just wanted to pick up a few bucks. So and I you know I don't know if that has changed, but I think there's probably still a lot of that out there. They just people want to pick and choose when they can work. You know, and that's why the job of the person who has to call these people every day is awful. is not a good job. But <laughs> They get they get paid extra here, right? Yeah, they all get a stipend. Yeah. So, so if you had so a situation tough. where you had a teacher out long term, so your substitute was here for longer than ninety days, and you'd want to bring in, I assume, somebody who's licensed. 
Wouldn't you have the authority to hire them on a contract till the end of the year? Yes. Yeah. So wouldn't it make sense if that's the case to go with something similar to what they do at Greater Lowell and just pay pay a much better, much more attractive daily rate uh, and just leave it at that? And you would have the authority to hire the long-term sub at Teachers Bay. Correct. Yeah, they negotiate the salary. If the they, salaries if they, they want to. If we have a position due to a medical Correct. need, then Correct. We, that's a posting. That, Correct. That and you could hire from within the, within the parameters of the budget that I hire. So it, to me, it would just make sense to go on a pay scale similar to what they have at Greater Lowell and just run it straight across because you would have the authority to hire a teacher if you need somebody long term. That that pay scale is much more attractive than what we offer. Even so they're, they're two separate things, right? I think what you're saying is basically like if you know you're gonna have an attorney leave you plan for that, that's gonna be outside of the sub. So these are day to day subs. These rates are all for day to day Correct. subs. Correct. Only. So let's be careful about making you're right, mixing apples and oranges. Mm -hmm. The, the longer term subs for a, for substituting for one teacher for a fixed period of time in the weeks category is something that we post and that um, that you know I set the pay for based on the caliber of the candidate, the difficulty of finding somebody. So if I had a chemistry teacher or a you know or a you know something. That was hard to find. You might have to pay more, etc. No, I understand that, but I mean, but the these are just point, day to day. No, no, I understand that, but my point is, a lot of those long-term ones are going to be that's a totally separate thing. So, to Bob's right. point, if you had a higher pay rate, you're not going to have as much. You know, this would give you a better pool. I mean, not guaranteed, but probably be more competitive <clears> in the market. How much money do we budget annually to substitute? One hundred thousand. How much do we use? That and then some. <laughs> Where do we get the def where do you pull a deficit from? It, Any account various accounts? Yeah, usually if the salaries in different uh, departments are over under, you know, with retirees and new teachers coming a little bit less, you might have a little bit in one area. Um, you know, we've already spent thirty seven thousand dollars to date on substitutes. How much? Thirty seven seven. Last um, year we spent one hundred and seventy one. You know, so I mean last year was a, obviously a bizarre year, but there were years depending on long-term leaves. This this year will we've got quite a few leaves, so this one will increase. And that hundred thousand includes both Mr. Fusco's out per day and Mrs. Bartoloni's out on maternity. Correct. Those are both yes. in the hundred thousand. Yeah, Correct. Yeah, Correct. So, so they're so, not they're not budgeted separately. So if a teacher gets hired at a teacher's rate the money comes out of the same pool no, to cover a maternity. Correct. Yeah. We only have one line item. Correct. Because, so that, that, because that teacher who's out is getting no, paid sick leave. So. I, mean, I still think we need to address the inequity. I, I think Brian's right. That's, I'm, I wouldn't come in here. We've all been in school. Everybody knows what happens to substitutes. <laughs> Would you come in here and get harassed for 14 bucks an hour? Because I wouldn't do it. It's tough business. I just, I just have a question. So, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about, you know, these someone's here for a long period of time, they're going to do less than planning. So, say a teacher is up for three days in chemistry, what do the children do if they're not doing lesson plans? So, the so the teacher is required to leave right. lesson mm -hmm. plans. Okay. So, the teacher will leave. Right. The teacher, mm -hmm. the teacher the plans the lessons. lessons. Okay. Okay. So, uh, a lot of times when, when talks to teachers, there's a little bit of a chicken or the egg situation. If a teacher knows so-and-so is lined up as his or her substitute, they will plan these activities because they know that substitute is capable of right. implementing them. Whereas if they say, we have no idea who's showing up for you, Mr. Fusco, <laughs> it's the luck of the draw that day. You have to plan something um, neutral, more, <laughs> like, you know, okay. more busy work or more just assigned. And, yeah. So it's the other thing that's been positively impacting our need for substitutes is the fact that all professional development is essentially stopped right now. That you know, 
where many teachers were, you know, would go to a conference for a day or a lot of conferences, you know, the conference business has really dried up a lot. So um, that's actually something that's working to our face. Last year was, I mean, we were hiring people left and right just to cover the teachers who were out, et cetera. So. Well, recognizing that um, there's the, the day, the short term day to day versus the longer term. Um, the observations Bob uh, Ken made about the, the greater Lowell, which is this gradations within based on people's experience. And I can see where that has good and bad effects because now you're, you know, some substitutes are more expensive than others, but maybe that's a good thing. So that's like one choice we have. But then there's the issue of what is the basic rate? If you, I mean, for example, if you were implementing something like the greater level concept of paying different rates, whatever they may be, based on qualification levels of the substitute teacher, would that be a problem to implement or would it be workable? Or do you see it as having negative consequences in your ability to find people day to day? I mean, I think it's anything's implementable. I think it would require us to to pivot from a um, time-based pay system to a uh, you know to a, an individual based on you know we'd have to set a rate per person based on their background. So someone would have to review everybody's background uh, and set the rate when you're uh, when you when you uh, bring them on board. Um, I you know for day to day subs I it, you know you can make an argument either way that you know uh, somebody who's been in this building for 40 or 45 days and knows our bell schedule and knows the teachers and knows the kids yes. and has had a kid in this class, uh, in the English class they substituted in and then when they're down at uh, in science, they know the same student. Um, you know, there's some benefit to that. Regardless, regardless of, of their qualifications. Regardless of what, whether they have a DESE certification <laughs> or not. You know, I think, I think, our day-to-day -day subs execute teacher plans. Mm -hmm. They don't do planning. And many teachers who are, if a teacher is out sick, they, use, they typically have what's called an emergency substitute plan. And that is traditionally a plan that is either review or it's not based on exactly where they are in the scope and sequence of their class because they they're not I mean a lot of their plans based are are determined based on where they ended the class the day before. And if they come down sick that night and they haven't written their plan, they have what's called an emergency plan, which is skills review or uh, a general review or something like that. So, you know, they're not getting just in time English instruction in an English class. They're getting, in, you know, when somebody calls out sick or they have a sick child, for example, they're getting, you know, the emergency plan. So, I, I know, and I don't, I'm not doing this to disparage substitutes. I'm doing this to kind of show you what happens when subs are out. That, you know, they're not coming in and teaching calculus. They're coming in, maintaining order in the classroom, keeping them focused on the work the teacher has assigned them to do. So I'm inferring you're suggesting not go for a differentiated rate, but we think we have a consensus that we need to have an increased increase. rate. That's what I think. So the imagine is increase. the issue is what's that number based on a six hour day? What's the hourly rate that we would reasonably expect people could live with? And we would feel comfortable with and we could afford is that number fifteen dollars an hour twenty dollars an hour twenty five dollars an hour i mean it's a matter of picking a number then i was going to suggest that we go to 125 an hour across the board 
Now see, and, and I'm gonna. One twenty-five a day. day. And I'm gonna disagree. <laughs> seven hours. But I'm gonna tell you, I disagree with that. Because if I was working here, like you know, and I'm substituting for different teachers, and then I've been here for like thirty days, and I'm still making the exact same rate. You know, I don't know. I think I would hope that I could get an increase. You know, and I think that's what we show them when we, if we start out at $100 a day, and then we bring it up to 110, and then we bring it up to 135, and then maybe 145 or whatever, something like that. Because I was thinking of this incorrectly, and when the superintendent started talking, it dawned on me. So these people who work 90 days, they could have been in 20 different classes. You know what I mean? Yes. Or, you know, they're not, different right, classes. they could be in how oh, yeah. many ever classes we have. No, they don't have to be consecutive. They don't. No. No. <clears throat> no, it's not consecutive days, no. and it's just, it's throughout the year. I think I'd be inclined to say. If they reach the 90th say, day in April, then they get, that's when they get it. Right. right. And but they have the, the opportunity to substitute at different schools, correct? So right. Like you wouldn't just substitute at Chushy, you right. might substitute at might go somewhere else. So yeah. if you had a choice between the two, you would probably go with the one that <laughs> those, paid those, you the more those days, that you enjoyed. Is, that mind. is not as prevalent as it used to be. Yeah. Because Shashi, if you you know, if you want to be a substitute, any school system, you will call you every day. There's there's more there's more need than there is substitute. Right. So when Tuxbury was paying fifty dollars, believe me, everybody was going to whatever you, school. You could pick. Were. You you you'll pick. And at substitutes like I think most substitutes like to say, in the same school or the same system. One of the advantages about Chashin is that it's the same school. Whereas in a K to twelve district, you might work at middle school one day, a high school the next. There's you know it's it's the one of the one of the things that makes substitutes comfortable is they understand your routine. They understand our routine. They feel comfortable in that. So going from school to school is something that substitutes, I, my experience is they don't like to do. And now they don't have to. So they'll pick Shasheen if we can keep them busy, or they'll go to Burlington and stay in Burlington, or they'll go to Bedford or Bill Ricker. But we're not sharing substitutes with Bill Ricker, really, that I'm aware of. What do we do when one of the trade one of the shops needs a substitute? Well, we <clears throat> most of the shops have multiple teachers in them, so um, for cover? day to day, we traditionally don't fill those, right? Only that I'm aware of. It depends on the shop they yeah. do. They try to cover. Or it's still just somebody who's not leading the program. Yeah, and, then, and it doesn't matter if they have a location. The same person can be an academic one day and a location on the yep. next day. It yep. doesn't matter. Yep. I so think how qualified would that academic subject to take over? Sure. Not. The vocational director has his set of subs that he right. likes yep. for certain programs. Um, so I do know his assistant tries to get those ones for those programs if you can. But they, it could be anybody. I think whether we go for um, education experience, you know, no license. Some license, that's mm -hmm. you know, versus experience in our building. Mm -hmm. Which one we do is kind of a um, tied to our mission statement, if, if you were to me. Um, and you know, what 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 do we want more? And I think I sense to be someone who knows the building and knows the routine would probably be um, more more of what we want. Um, I do like the idea of it going up to encourage people to keep coming. And I also like the idea of just taking the entire scale and bumping it up. Right. Like keeping it, keep it the way it is, but just make all the numbers a little higher. Right. Obviously, budget for that. I think that um, I was looking at numbers and minimum wage is about, well, the 15 that you're talking about, that it's being bumped up to. We'll we be, should be we'll ahead of that. Right. It'll anyway, be 15, it'll be fifteen dollars an hour, in Massachusetts, as of January 1, twenty twenty-three, which is only a year away. Right. So <laughs> to cover that, would we would need to be at ninety dollars a day, um, just to be at minimum wage. That generally um, thirty-five thousand, which is like entry an entry level 
MFA with an associate's degree-ish, um, some bachelor degree program wages outside of that. Um, that would be $100 for a day. Mm -hmm. That seems more appropriate to me, that yeah, entry level kind have, yeah. of pay. Um, and then incentivizing yeah. as we as we go. That was my thought. Yeah, so like that it. would bump up the and when I was looking at this, um, I saw the average in the state was sixty-five to two hundred dollars, with the average being a hundred, which is that day to day. So I would think that we should be around that hundred dollar rate. That's just me. That puts people at a thirty-five thousand dollar entry if they went, if they did it every day, but without benefits. So it doesn't equal what our teachers would equal that are entry level because they get benefits. Um, which to incentivize, I would think we should do the at a minimum the hundred dollar um, day to day, and then bump that up the way it has been, which is fifteen, ten. Sorry, 15 and then 15 across the board. So it went 100, uh, 115, 140. Can we this, absorb that kind of increase? And would this be for this year or would this be yeah, for next school year? It's going to be a budget. If it's a budget well, thing, well, it's for next school year, right, Mom? Yeah, well, if you're, I'll have to kind of figure out where. And again, it, there are years we don't have people out. So we it's sure. difficult to kind of gauge, but I mean, I can look at and get an idea on what these rates will look like based on what we've done, kind of figure those in. But but the discussion we're having is for the 22, 23. Yes. Years. It doesn't necessarily it's have up to be. To whatever you guys can do it, we can change it now. We, we can, honestly, we can always, I've been here a long time, we can always right. find the money. Yeah, we can change it now. We're I mean, usually yeah. moving it in June. We can start moving it now. So. I think we already heard that it, this is a budget number. This is a little bit like our snow snow budgets um, mm -hmm. that all our cities and towns have, that they often get passed early on, and then you deal with it. But We'd this like is, it to be more realistic, perhaps. This is a number that is always a guess. Right. You have no control right. over this. Right. Number. You can't be precise. So it's, it's now the two Christine, big unknowns. What yeah. were those numbers you had? So starting um, with a hundred, right? Yeah. So ninety dollars a day is the minimum wage rate. We're below that anyway, with no benefits. Thirty-five thousand, which I would consider an entry level uh, job wage, is a hundred and one. For the six hour. So it would be a hundred dollars for it's up to 30 time. days, right? Yeah. Right? Up to 30? That, yeah. No, I thought. No, I thought that went up to 115 at the 11 days. Okay. So uh, the hundred would be for the for, for 10 days. 10 right? days. Right. And then 115? Yeah. 11 to 30? And what about 31 to 59? That would be 140. Do and that's just uh, fifteen dollars every time. Yeah, I was going to say, can we, we don't do it unless to do that? and then yeah. add later if we have to, as instead of. Of course. Can so I was doing it. I was adding yeah. ten more. If you yeah, yeah if you go up, <laughs> if you don't go back. Yes, I yeah. would rather do it in lesser increments right. and that add later. Okay. So um, I just you know want to just to you know just maybe ask um, the budget committee to maybe consider you know just kind of you know you talked about the mission of the school mm -hmm. and cooperating with. You know, um, young talent to you know make opportunities. You know that's what we do. We have a co-op program here. Um, if we do decide maybe to find maybe budget for maybe three permanent subs, maybe partnering with UMass Lowell or Merrimack Community College and Middlesex, Middlesex, and saying you know do we have any young teachers that are looking to start their career? Maybe starting here, um, having a salary benefit. You know maybe they'll stay. You know, um, maybe, you know, they'll stay here for a few years, get their really good experience and move on. But just, you know, kind of opening that window for them to work at school like this. Mm -hmm. We could do a small increase now mm -hmm. and then give the budget subcommittee a chance to right. consider permanent subs and a bigger increase. But, you know, because there is a sub shortage right now and we are hitting the winter when theoretically 
more people are going to be staying home, especially because Dr. Jackson has asked them, you know, the, the work ethic, it's we simple. teach them all, come to work no matter. <laughs> we kind of have to ignore that right now, which is too bad, but it makes sense. Um, you know, a small increase now, and then let the budget subcommittee and then the rest of us after we see the budget subcommittee's thoughts consider um, a bigger um, a bigger rate for next year and or a permanent sub position. You know, maybe just go up like right now, maybe just go to, to 95 and 105 and 115, like, you know, go, give, take the further, the 85 and bump it by $10. And then just every level gets another ten dollars and leave it at that just for right now. And then you know that way, like because Nancy's right, we can't go back. Right. So we don't want to make this huge jump now and then be like, all right, well, we decided to do XYZ and that's not sustainable. We want something that's a little bit, but still sustainable. And yeah. Melanie, you know my numbers way better than I do. So the jump so in ninety five is too big do a jump. This if you're gonna do we're gonna go into the next one. We do the meeting before the next one, so we can have a meeting in January. Because it meeting January. Yeah, that's. So you could do a meeting. I mean, you're already in January. December. You're going to go on the holidays, so instead of making a rash judgment tonight, why don't we put that on as a meeting for mm -hmm. the next budget, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about it at the next meeting. So instead of just like throwing numbers around, like some people are saying, go high, some go low, then you can come up <laughs> with like at least like a, you know. Like fortunately, you're on it too. Um, you're on budget. Right? Who's on budget? So, Kip, okay, what you're saying is you don't have to jump into this because I like what you're thinking here. It's been very difficult getting subs out of everywhere, yeah. everywhere, everywhere. My brother and Lynn Tech, they're paying a dollar, hundred seventy-five dollars a day. Amazing. You can't get anybody. And I was fortunate when I taught here. We had some great subs, Brad. And if I left a lesson, it was done. And I always thank these people. And so, yes, we're. Well, I agree. Pay them more, I know, but let's go ahead. Right, we make a decision tonight. We don't have to. Let's go ahead and talk, and if we like can make do that it, the folks the next yeah. meeting, which is more urgent, and, uh, and then you can have a subsequent meeting after that. To yes, talk about, like what you're talking about. With the, we're gonna have. We're gonna okay. need. You know, the budget subcommittee is gonna be in January. We'll be reviewing the capital yep. recommendation as well. So that's gonna be a long meeting. Can I make a suggestion or a recommendation to the budget committee? Are you sure? Just my thoughts. I actually now agree with what Patty said, but I would start at 100. And I, I if you would consider going across in four boxes 100, 120, 140, and max it out at 150 at 90 plus. Because uh, if you if you average that money out, I mean, it's not, it's, it's short money, it's just you. A hundred dollars a day, as Christine said, it, honestly, it's not doing much better than minimum wage. And if you can't get people at 175 bucks, you're not getting them at 100. And 15 dollars more for maybe is only for those 10 days is only cost you 150. Correct. Correct. Right. But I would consider going across and just in maxing it out. On the, right. So you're going to max it out at. Um, the 90, day, the 90 days at 150. Mm -hmm. and anybody longer than that is going to be hired by the superintendent anyway as a teacher. Okay. And granted, it's coming out of the budget, but it's going to come out of the budget anyway. Okay. And I think that those are reasonable numbers, and you guys can yep. report back to us. Yeah. Yeah. What was your numbers again? Hundred. It's a hundred. Yeah. Would be a hundred would be the base. Yeah. Yeah. So 11 to 30 would be 120. Yep. 11 to 30 is 120. Yep. 31 to 59 would be 140. And everything after that would be 150. So is that 60 plus? Or 90 yes, plus? it would be 60. 60 plus so it would be 60 way. all the way across. Okay. 150? Yep, yeah. 60, 6. So we're going to eliminate the 90 days. So it would be 60 to whatever would be 150. What's your retired suggestion? teacher? Thoughts on the retired <clears throat> teacher? 150 or. Mm. You would have to. I would recommend you keep your retired teacher or Shashi retired teacher to me is worth somebody who's got 60, who's 60. It's again, sure, understanding the building, so understanding the building. They would be at 150. Yeah. Yes. You pay them 125 yeah. now. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think 150 for a retired teacher across the board would be fair. Yeah. You know, 750 a week. That's fine. 
and you'd have a substitute that has much more control over the class than the guy that's on the front door at 706. Those teachers are all. Bob, that did, you, did you consider doing that this year, or are we talking? Uh, I, I don't would, know. I'm just, what's your I, thoughts? Honestly, I would consider implementing it in January yeah. because okay. we, I think we are so I far out of whack. No, I understand. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about it and say we'll do it next year, but I know. Okay. No. I mean, honestly, Ronnie, at the end of the day, the, these increases no, are going to drop in the bucket. So, and we have it. But they're not going to drop. I'm like, sure Melanie the will find these it. people. No. 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 It's significant. Melanie's not pulling her hair out yet. So. It's okay. <laughs> right. She hasn't gone to an appointment, I will. Yeah. Here's Charlie. It's possible to principle, speak though. with whoever does silver subs and give us a rough idea to what we can meet in the next month. Get, get the a rough idea. Get a rough number, the number so, on the teachers, only the fill in. Right. Good idea. How many subs per day? <laughs> It might be a good idea to bring that person in to, just to see how the process works so in January. Well, it doesn't work well because you <laughs> might have some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I've seen. Maybe she'll I've ask seen, us to pay them more. I've seen. I've seen it in action. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, they're they're moving people around every period. Yeah. 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 Oh, you I know, think. When, yeah. when the person who's out got a has a planning period, they move the sub to a, somebody else's to somebody class. else's class. Yeah. So not only are they not getting, I mean, not that subs need a planning period per se, but okay. so Mental they're health. working every moment. They, they right. work. yeah. A, she like Mrs. Fish. who used to be. Oh Mrs. yes, Fish? I remember Mrs. Fish. Yes. She used to get up at 4.30 in the morning and start calling substitutes. She was about 92. So. <laughs> With her rotary phone. Yes. <laughs> I subbed one. She's getting off. Okay. So, substitute teacher pay goes to the budget substitute. Have fun, budget substitute. Thank you. Okay, future I agenda items. Anybody have anything? Well, we do want to know about substitute teachers. What else? What about the MSBA? That's for the new year. MSBA. Okay. Have we heard anything lately? I haven't seen the update from the MSBA yet. No. That's something about them. I can't remember. Okay. One of our uh, other vocational schools, I think I just saw, is getting ready to start their override vote uh, well, planning for their Metro Tech building. Um, they're starting to flash us within each of the communities. It'll be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. So having observed their building recently, it looks like they made the decision maybe to let it deteriorate more. Our, our building, it's, it, we've talked about this a little bit in the right. facilities committee. The building has been so well kept up. Right. Interior and exterior doesn't make as negative an impression mm -hmm. as some of the buildings that are getting funded, which right. is sort of, again, it is what it is. But, um, Melanie, when do you start talking to the finance committees? Uh, Wilmington is usually for us in March. In March. So that's why the public hearing is scheduled for March 1st with you. And then typically Wilmington is immediately thereafter. They're usually the first one. Okay. I think the local was early last year, but Wilmington is always the first, historically. We'll stay for in person as early. Right. Um, okay, so we have to go into executive session, but we are going to adjourn right after executive sessions. So that'll be the end of our broadcast for tonight. Did you have something to say? I was making a motion to go into executive okay. session. Can you hang on? Absolutely. So we can just. You know, I'll say Merry Christmas to everybody out there. Happy Merry Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, Christmas. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy Happy New New Year. Year. Wonderful New Year. Okay, now you can make it. <laughs> Chairman Muse, I'll make it a, a motion. We move into executive session to discuss pending litigation. Second. And to, and then further. Session. And we will adjourn. We will come, come out back. only to we adjourn. We will come out only to adjourn mm -hmm. for the evening. Okay. Thank you very much. Second. Anybody? All right. All right.